All right, welcome everybody to the March 1st OpenShift Commons briefing. My name is Paul Mori. I'll be your host today. I have with me Yuri Tsarev uh, from OBSA Group, and he is going to talk to us today about the Kubernetes Global Balancer. So why don't you take it away, Yuri? Hi, thanks a lot, Paul. So I'm Yuri, I'm Principal Engineer in OBSA, and uh, I'm part of the platform engineering team, and we are mostly focused on building uh, advanced automation on top of Kubernetes. And one of the open source projects that we produced in uh, 2020 is the Kubernetes Global Balancer. Uh, so uh, roughly uh, around the concept. Uh, guys, do you hear me well? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. Uh, there was some. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, it, this project is originated out of the need to, of uh, global load balancers that is Kubernetes native and pretty much cloud native. So we tried multiple vendors, uh, none of them worked for us well, so we decided to uh, develop uh, one uh, load balancer from scratch. But this load, ba load balancer is not a standard approach for load balancing. It doesn't pass the traffic through itself. It actually modifies uh, DNS responses on fly and it uh, monitors the Kubernetes primitives from inside the cluster. So it is developed uh, uh, as an operator pattern, like it's coined from Corus back in the days. Uh, it doesn't have any single point of failure, so uh, a controller is installed uh, on top of the target clusters where workloads are uh, running. And there is no uh, control cluster, uh, so there is no single point of failure in that regards. And uh, everything is built on top of standard Kubernetes prim primitives, ingress services, associated endpoints, and down to liveness and readiness post props. So uh, the core of the operation is the DNS protocol, and uh, as it's running internet, it's pretty reliable. It obviously has its own limitation, but for global, to, uh, global balancing scenario, it works pretty good. And uh, we built, uh, we try to build the KGB uh, this way, so it's as much independent uh, of environment as possible. So meaning that we uh, rely on environment DNS, for example, we call it edge DNS. It's Route 53, for example, or info blocks in our on-prem scenario, or NS1, uh, as we have another integration. So we are configuring only zone DNS zone delegation on uh, environment DNS. And the rest of the DNS responses are served dynamically uh, by KGB itself. So from implementation standpoint, uh, we use the operator SDK. SDK uh, it worked very nicely for us, and uh, it allowed uh, us to bootstrap project pretty quickly. Another integral uh, part of KGB score DNS, that's exactly the tiny part that uh, serves the DNS and responses dynamically and basically steering traffic to uh, desired clusters according to the load balancing strategy. External DNS is taking care of uh, uh, communication with external DNS, pro uh, with edge DNS providers, as I mentioned. So it's uh, as a Route 53, NS1, uh, info blocks and maybe something else in future. So th these three we already very well tested. Tested. So this part uh, takes care of automated zone delegation. And uh, uh, we are also were using etcd, like dedicated etcd cluster and associated etcd operator, uh, to actually populate a local uh, etcd database dynamically. So external DNS would uh, read. Uh, information from dynamically, sorry for that, uh, dynamically populated DNS endpoint CRD, uh, and uh, external DNS would locally uh, create the etcd entries. So, uh, for, and eventually core DNS would read from this etcd, it's so-called the Sky DNS backend. So, it worked uh, like out of the box, we utilize community uh, procedure here. But it had uh, uh, quite amount of reliability and maintainability problems. For so, so for example, a CD operator uh, is dropped by community completely at CD itself, and it wasn't working reliably enough. So, uh, you know, long-running clusters we were finding at CD uh, in a degraded state from time to time. So it was a problem for KGB reliability itself. So that's why in a recent version we 
dropped that CD and the CD pairs are completely, and we replaced it with a core DNS build with a custom um, Kubernetes CRD plugin that we developed recently. So core DNS, in our case, can read uh, information directly from DNS endpoint. I will show everything like in, in a demo how it works. Uh, so now we can uh, uh, create this uh, dynamically morphed DNS responses uh, 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 with information out of DNS endpoint CRD uh, directly uh, uh, from communication of core DNS with basically Kubernetes API bypassing uh, uh, unnecessary layer of etcd, etcd, etcd operator and it made the whole setup much more reliable. And everything is driven by a single CRD uh, of GSLB type. So uh, we have uh, quite amount of integrations. So this HDNS providers I mentioned. So Infoblox we have uh, testing, like not testing, we're using in the bank. And uh, that was the first provider we implemented. So to fulfill our business needs. Uh, Route 53, uh, we using uh, AWS reference setup that I will show you today uh, on top of two geographically dispersed EKS clusters and NS1 as our future integration. Uh, we are very close collaboration with these guys, they are amazing. And we have a uh, very nice uh, uh, open source uh, collaboration with Admiralty project, which is uh, uh, multi-cluster scheduling and it works very nicely where Admiralty schedules workloads on top of uh, multiple clusters and KGB basically enables uh, a load balancing for them. So we have a associated uh, tutorial for that on both of the on the pages of both of the project. So you can quickly go to the demo. So uh, just to quickly on a uh, on a project website. So it's KGBIO and associated GitHub obviously. So uh, just to provide a context between the demo, so we will run in two EKS clusters. Um, Yuri, it uh, might yeah, help yeah. if you just bump the font size up or zoom in on that picture a little bit. Um, I'll try. Is it somehow better? There we go. There we go. Cool, cool. Thank you for that. Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, we will run a demo setup similar to the picture here. So two geographically dispersed clusters. Uh, one is in Europe and Dublin, another one in uh, Africa, Cape Town. And uh, on top of both clusters, uh, KGB is already pretty deployed and there are some sample workloads uh, and uh, we will work with GSLB custom resource definition. And custom resource definition pretty much works uh, it looks like like that. It's on the index page. So we have a, a kind of GSLB, obviously have a special API, and we have embedded ingress uh, resource uh, uh, type. So basically it's kind of the same ingress spec as a standard Kubernetes one. It's actually uh, behind the scenes, uh, under the hood, it's exactly the same Golang type, and we embed it into JSLB. And uh, we specify the pretty standard rules, also host and backend service. So, and the controller will be monitoring its healthiness. And on top of that, we attaching, uh, uh, we adding the specific load balancing strategy. Uh, so let's go straight to the demo, I guess. Uh, is my console visible? All good? Uh, it's visible to me, yeah. Cool. All right, so uh, what we're running here? Uh, so two clusters, as uh, I mentioned, we'll just we'll check so we get notes the geographical locality. Okay, and I'm surprisingly logged out. Sorry for that. Uh, sorry, token just got expired. Wasn't very lucky. So yeah, we are in Europe. The second uh, cluster is in a Cape Town. So we, he, we see it by these specs, right? In a, in a not names. So uh, 
And uh, on the right pane, we just running continuously uh, this stuff. Uh, it's a, it just a demo, demo script, uh, which continuously pulling the associated FQDN. So it, it, it's just while true, right? And it grabs the message because it uh, it can uh, the sample application contains a geotag to actually demonstrate where it's located. So it, it's super simple. So we continuously pulling it. Currently, every, everything is healthy and uh, located in Europe, as we can see by Geotech here. So let's investigate the uh, testing setup. So first of all, uh, how um, KGB setup looks like. So controller itself, core DNS, and external DNS, which is uh, taking care of route with the three side of configuration. So effectively, uh, Zone delegation. So, uh, uh, so as you can see, pretty minimal footprint as, as of now, especially after we got rid of etcd uh, uh, operator and etcd special etcd cluster part. So, for uh, testing workload, so we are running in test JSLB uh, namespace a special. Work, uh, workload, which is like standard pod info, uh, which exactly returns this uh, uh, response with a with a geotag, and uh, we have uh, JSLBs. So this special JSLB uh, failover one, which is actually deployed out of this spec, which is very similar to uh, to the ones that I showed on the index page. So again, failover, test KGB IO as a main cost, backend service, which we are running in a testing namespace uh, of test GSLB here, and uh, failover strategy. And we are pinning uh, European cluster as the main one uh, before the failure occurs. So in case of some malfunction, uh, it will, it should be failed over to African one to Cape Town. So, in a, in runtime, it looks like this. Yeah, but better to specify. Uh, it's fully with the status. So, it detects that the service is healthy. Uh, the one that uh, is running in test just will be namespace. The one that's the, that is uh, front end pot info and uh, the one that is referencing emb embedded ingress spec, right? And it populates uh, the DNS endpoint uh, with the IP addresses of a, uh, of a load balancer associated with a, uh, with a workload ingress. So if we will get ingresses, and uh, specifically test GSLB failover. Uh, we will have in a AWS setup that we are running associated NLB. So if we dig this NLB, you will see these addresses, and that's exactly the ones that are getting populated uh, in DNS by KGB. So we pretty much can dig right now, and they are identical. So basically, currently, our code is running and we are pointing to European cluster. If we go to, uh, to Cape Town, so just to verify that we are in Cape Town, we are in Africa, uh, you will see that we are running exactly the same setup. So without any modification, it's the same spec. And uh, uh, both uh, clusters are returning consistent responses. So as you can see, this uh, African uh, cluster also returns uh, a DNS response, which consists IP addresses of European uh, cluster where workload is healthy and uh, which is uh, uh, labeled as a main one. Yuri, so, a question yeah. that I uh, that I thought of looking at this. 
How does the geotag field of the status uh, get computed? Yeah, so geotag, it, it is specified at the very uh, uh, beginning of deployment of the cluster. So, for example, if you look in a European KGB configuration, right, when you, it's basically Helm values. So, we specify in geotag. And we specify okay. geotags to talk to. And uh, in case of, uh, in case of uh, African configuration, we're doing exactly the same as vice versa, right? Cluster geotech is the one that we label the cluster with, and uh, uh, external geotechs to talk to is the European one, so we close them. And the rest is, uh, is created by convention, so uh, zone uh, delegation, uh, NS servers names, they are all consistent geotech and zone, and basically clusters out of this geotagging, they know how to contact each other through this conventional FQDNs. Okay. And uh, that's how they uh, basically sharing the information, uh, also through DNS protocol. Got it. Thank you. Cool. So, uh, we can actually uh, go to the European cluster and try to emulate uh, the filler. So we can do it simply by, as we usually doing it by scaling, right? So uh, of deployment, so testing deployment for the info and we scale it to zero. So what uh, about to happen, uh, GSLB should uh, detect unhealthiness uh, with the reconcil uh, next reconciliation loop. So, as you can see, the limitation of DNS protocol. So, we're running like DNS DTL 30 seconds. We're also running some reconciliation loop on top. So, there will be some uh, five or threes during the failover. Let's see how fast it will happen. So, reconciliation loop already done. So, basically, uh, it's already re uh, uh, ready to return uh, African. IPs, IP addresses, and and basically failover had already happened, so it was pretty quickly. So uh, what important to pretty much repeat, but in a failover scenario, that again we have exactly the like mirror uh, resource in Africa, and it also returns the, again the uniform response, right? Now it took over, uh, and both European and African clusters are returning African Cape Town IP addresses of C slot bouncer and basically both of them are steering traffic to Africa because workload in Europe is dead. So uh, everything looks great and as expected. So we, we are getting African uh, geotech as a response. So we pretty much can scale it back in Europe. and see how it will return back to the master cluster. So next reconciliation loop, it should pick it up. While we're waiting for that to happen, here's another question. Yeah. Is yeah. Um, uh, what is the, the highest number of clusters that you've uh, used the global balancer with so far? Well, we always using it in player, right? So we even have a ticket like to test it like with more than two, but so far the, all the testing was done with one player. The, so gotcha. we have a multiple players, like we, we're running around 122 uh, clusters and they are KGB enabled, but they always like in, in this player. So we are not, we never properly tested it for, for example, for three clusters or four clusters enabled. Not yet. Gotcha. We definitely have it in the backlog. We are. Yeah, understood. I think this is a pretty new project, right? How long have you been working yeah. on this? Well, it started in December 2019, so it's like slightly more than one year. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it is already uh, heavily used within APSA. So we're running it in production for several projects, and more and more teams are adopting. So, yeah, obviously finding some um, new issues and challenges 
of the way. So, for example, currently we are thinking how to actually uh, handle multi-tenancy. Uh, usually, our clusters, as to like we are uh, controlling them with a rancher centralized way, so there is no problem to spin up a new pair of clusters for a team, and they will fully own it. But sometimes we need a multi-tenancy, and KGB is actually not ready for it, right? And by the way, yeah, it failed uh, uh, over back to switch back to the main cluster. So now we are in Europe, so everything is expected. Yeah, so, and to, we have, like, if we go to the GitHub, we have pretty much a good activity. Uh, we're using GitHub issues as a, not just a, like the reporting box, but also building uh, a milestone. So we have quite a lot of plans. Outstanding ones, for example, how to implement more complex strategies. So currently it's a failover and a round robin. Uh, I can quickly show you round robin. Back. Yeah, so uh, basically it, it's pretty much the same. Uh, here in this uh, uh, example, we just operating several applications, several services in backend, right? So just to uh, uh, demonstrate the statuses like non existing, unhealthy, and front end, which is healthy already, and a uh, round robin strategy. Yeah, th this one are additional controls over the specific stuff like DNS detail, for example, if you want to make it shorter or longer. So it's all available. Yeah, and uh, for, uh, actually I can, I can show the round robin runtime. We should have this JSLB around. Yeah, so round robin is basically merging the array of uh, IP array of both clusters, right? And, and basically making them uh, DNS, standard DNS round robin out, out, out of two clusters. So as you can see, and again, if you scale, so uh, if you emulate yet another failure, Uh, uh, it should return only half an array and then return it back. So while it, it, it's converging, uh, yeah, so the next step for us would be figure out uh, how to implement more advanced load balancing strategies. Like we do not have a, a more urgent business need for that. So like these two reliable strategies are pretty enough as of now for us. Uh, but from community standpoint, we definitely want to implement something like more interesting, like geographically aware, geographically like returns the closest uh, DNS response, for example, closest to the requester and all that stuff. So uh, we are thinking of idea of writing some advanced custom for DNS plugin, which is like aware of situation more and uh, can uh, modify DNS responses on the fly. But currently it is, uh, it is nice, it can do its job, but it's pretty much, uh, if, you, if you get to these DNS endpoints, right? Uh, that's how, we, how it works in the backend. The controller dynamically populates these DNS endpoint CRD, of this kind, and uh, for DNS reads it. And according to the strategy, it populates with a, a specific um, IP addresses. And obviously it has its limitation, it's enough for Basic load balancing strategies is one I demonstrated, but it's not enough for something more advanced like weighted uh, load balancing or again geographically uh, geographical locality because it, it's not enough dynamic here, right? Mm -hmm. So, is there uh, a, is there a particular yeah. strategy that you uh, heard requests for many times from community folks? Uh, well, uh, not yet. So we, we are not like, we are still a little bit on, under radar, right? So, uh, uh, there is no yet direct response, but, uh, uh, it's very nice that Red Hat actually, uh, initiated some, uh, uh, conversations. So, and willing to contribute. So Rafael, uh, you probably uh, know him, uh, uh, a very nice person. He, <clears throat> Approached us with a very technical question regarding KGB, and uh, it looked like 
we are going to have very nice collaboration uh, in regards of integration to OpenShift. Uh, so yeah, looks very promising. And we definitely uh, have uh, some some plans regarding regarding strategy. So if you pretty much um, look in the issue, so we want to add the topology, some um, manual weighted and consistent round robin because currently it's it's pretty much random. So yeah, we we have this uh, plans in mind, but so far. Uh, we heavily uh, worked on uh, IPI stabilization and uh, overall re reliability of uh, solution itself. So uh, many uh, enhancement in the management, for example, uh, so for, to ease the adoption uh, by teams, uh, we implemented like a backward uh, uh, ability to create GCLB strategy with a simple Ingress annotation, I think it's, it's better to show in a, in a documentation. So if we go there. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so uh, one of the main goals of KGB is actually to give development team a power over load, ba load balancing, right? So instead of standard HTTP checks, we utilizing uh, pod props, uh, which are defined by application teams. So, and the strategy is uh, describable uh, by a simple CRD. But sometimes, like, it's a little bit overhead uh, to uh, add yet another CRD into Helm charts and we have multiple teams. So that's why, and it was also a community request from Admiralty project. Uh, we added ability to add the specific HB annotations on top of standard ingress a controller uh, with us. The, the same uh, information as we specify in the spec, so like uh, strategy type and geotech in case of failover, controller would pick it up and create GSLB automatically uh, for this specific ingress, reference it, and it will close the loop this way. So uh, basically, application teams uh, are even not required to control yet another CRD. They can pretty much uh, utilize the standard ingress with a couple of additional annotations and the global load balancing will work for them. Control, controller will take care. And there's a question in the chat about yeah. whether uh, KGB has been submitted at all to CNCF or is that on the radar? Is that on the roadmap? It's totally on the radar, yeah. Uh, I really uh, want to submit it to Sandbox as soon as possible. Like, it's a really good question, yeah. We have a life in direct plans. All right. We are just getting ready with a little bit stabilization. So I think we are uh, pretty much uh, tested uh, currently, like uh, both internally and a uh, little bit by community. So mm -hmm. the project is pretty good shape. So I think it's ready for the sandbox. Um. If folks want to get involved, uh, I'm sensing that the GitHub uh, repos yep. are the best place. Is that accurate? Yeah, totally. So uh, we are doing everything in GitHub uh, for KGB. So again, GitHub issues are used not just as issues, but as also any, anything, future requests, roadmap planning, and uh, anything. And obviously, pull requests are welcome. And gotcha. feel free to shoot an idea, yeah. And for chat, we are, we are hanging out in a SIG multi-cluster in a uh, Kubernetes flag, so you can find us there as well. Diane, I see you have a question in the chat. Um, why don't we take that one offline? Absolutely, yeah. I was trying to, trying to figure out who... Um who's working on this besides ABSA, is it, or is this just coming out of ABSA, um, mostly contributing this project? Yeah, so it's coming out of ABSA, but we are trying to gather community. And as I mentioned, we already have a very nice uh, conversation with Red Hat, uh, and uh, looks like Red Hat will join, and we are very happy about this fact. And there's another question. All right, any then, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, Vipin is asking, um, how is 
this different from F5 CIS um, because he's they're using F5 CIS. Mm, I'm not sure if I'm familiar with CIS, but generally, uh, how it's totally different from any kind of standard load balancer. Uh, so the two things. So uh, it doesn't uh, uh, pass the traffic through itself. It utilizes so, uh, it basically works uh, purely over DNS, and it is aware of internal cluster resources. So it doesn't employ any standard HTTP checks. It uses uh, uh, port liveness and readiness check to to make a uh, balancing steering decision, and it's totally open source. Hopefully, it somehow answers the question. Yeah, yeah, I know we have a built-in load balancer, I believe, for OpenShift now. So, is this re would this replace that, Paul? Um. Uh, I think you're referring to the router. Yeah. Uh, I I don't think that I have enough information about what's been discussed to to comment about that. Well, I I look forward to seeing it in the sandbox and and getting some more folks and more red hatters working on it and seeing it again in action and integrated into OpenShift. Um, and a demo of that sometime soon. That would be awesome. So that sounds great. Yeah, maybe we'll have uh, maybe we'll have a, a sequel to this one sometime soon. Yeah, that would be great. All right, let's see. Any other questions in the chat? If if not, what I'd have you do, Yuri, is go back to your home page there for your project for for K eight GB. Mm, yep. And it's so close to KGB. I'm going to have to keep myself from saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> it's not bad. And then um, I, I would say um, this is where people can go uh, as well to find more information. Or um, as you said, Yuri, um, this, the SIG cluster, the CNCF SIG cluster, SIG is. SIG multi cluster. Um, yeah, SIG multi cluster it would be a great place to find you all. And. Um, I, I look forward to seeing it used in um, at scale in production and getting some more feedback on this. Um, I think it's going to be a great addiction, a, a, a great addiction. I almost said addition <laughs> um, uh, to the CNCF and, and to you know just to the open source communities. This is really um, a very very interesting project. So um, I will be definitely following it along closely. Thank you All so right. much. Well, thanks for joining us, Yuri. Uh, and uh, just one thing, I think that was Kubernetes SIG multi-cluster. Yeah, it was. All right, great. Yeah, so basically I'm utilizing your flex channel, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, that's good. That's what it's there for. <laughs> that's cool. Perfect. All right, well, it's great to hear from the APSA group and i um, looking forward to hearing more great things. Um, and this is the beauty of open source. So thanks, Yuri and Paul, for having us today. All right, thanks. Thank you so much. Talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye.